Let's find out how we can start connecting Zapier with MCP servers. This is extremely powerful because as we know with Zapier, we get access to over 8,000 different applications that we can start leveraging in our MCP server. Whether we want to connect with Google Sheets, Notion, MailChimp, everything with a board, I'm gonna make this very simple video here so you understand how you can start leveraging it right away. Does that sound good? Let's go ahead and jump in. Welcome back y'all. Today's video is sponsored by Zapier. They hit me up and they're like, Corbin, we got a big update. I'm like, how big? We can now integrate with the MCP server. I know you've been seeing this in your feed, so I want to show you how to do that in today's video. I'm going to go ahead and make sure I leave this link in the description down below. Let's hit get started. Before I get any further, let me explain what MCP is. An MCP server in this context allows us to create a layer with external applications, e.g. cursor, cloud desktop, windsurf. And in this layer, we can access databases or APIs. Or in other words, using Zapier MCP, we can access all those apps. All those apps, Corbin, all those apps. And that's what makes this extremely powerful. So to get started here, you will have like a create your key here. So go ahead and hit that. I already did that for myself. And as identified by Zapier documentation here, treat it like a password. This is a secret. If anyone else gets access to this link, they'll be able to do all the actions you're about to see. Once you've created your link though, we're gonna hit edit MCP actions. This UI is gonna look very familiar if you are with me when we created GBT together, same idea. This allows us to create very specific actions that we'll be able to access in our little MCP server. Add new action. So when creating an action, this is anything with Zapier's ecosystem, whether that is Slack, all this we can do within our MCP server, Google Docs, all this we can do within our actions here. Essentially just type in your application that you care about and you'll probably get some actions there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create a Gmail draft. And the purpose of this Gmail draft is we're gonna create a draft just so I can show you how to do it. But our draft's gonna be like, we wanna do a trip to Bali. So we're gonna talk to our little AI chat bot, get all the information we need and then send a draft to ourselves. In theory, we could set it up where I could provide the emails I wanna send it to as well, but we're just trying to get this connected so y'all can start using it, right? So we're gonna go ahead and switch our account here. I'm gonna do contact at webcafeai.com to the two. For now, we'll just send it to ourselves. In theory, I could add like a whole email list here. For the subject and the body, that's where the magic happens. Obviously, we want the AI to come up with the subject and body based off the context of a conversation. And as you already know, with Zapier Automations, it doesn't just stop there. We can do a ton of other stuff, right? So if you're familiar with the automation ecosystem within Zapier, we basically can access all of those different variables and functionalities, such as the from name, the body type, adding a signature, everything we would want. For now though, this is sufficient. So we're gonna hit enable action. We gotta make sure that we see it as green so we can actually access it. If it is gray, it's not gonna work. So make sure that is green. There we go. So with that enabled there, let's come back to the docs. With the current documentation, we can connect this to a bunch of different stuff. We have nice little tutorials here for cursor, cloud desktop, and windsurf. We're gonna check out cursor today. The steps and processes that I'm gonna show you here are very similar across different applications though. So scrolling down here, obviously you're gonna need the app cursor. So make sure you have it installed. And it's pretty simple. If you have the newest version of cursor, it's gonna be like a one-stop go. So coming over to cursor here, we're gonna open its settings. So coming up here to the top left, I'm gonna go to cursor, settings, cursor settings. Here we go. They have a whole tab separated for this. So MCP. And then from here, we're gonna hit add new global MCP server, add. This is gonna open a file, don't worry. We'll make it simple. Coming over to the Zapier documentation, lucky for us, they actually pre-fill our underlying link that is relevant to our custom built MCP server on Zapier's backend. Essentially, just copy. And then what you're gonna do is paste. Once you paste, you should see your Zapier URL here. Obviously, I went ahead and just added zero zeros so you don't see my actual real one. So I'm gonna paste it back here once I wanna show you how to test it. But this should be how the code looks. I wanna show you this because I know in tutorials, sometimes you can run into errors and you're like, hold up, didn't you just skip a step? This is what it should look like, obviously with your real Zapier URL, but this is the structuring. So I'm gonna paste the real one here and then let's test it out. Once that's done, you should see Zapier MCP enabled with that little green dot. And what we can do is come up here and we should be good to go here. So a couple of things I want you to notate to make sure it's actually working is the underlying tools that this has access to. So what you'll notice is that since we created one action that has the ability to do Gmail, create draft, you're going to see it right here. Edit actions, add actions. That's like kind of like the more custom stuff. But the one that we created together was Gmail, create draft. This gives cursor the ability to access this endpoint found in our MCP server and essentially create a draft for an email. Idea being this, let's say we come back over here to our Zapier actions and we add a Slack action, like send Slack message, create new action, et cetera. You come back to cursor here and you're like, wait, Corbin, I don't see Slack create message. Well, all you need to do 
is simply just reload. What's nice is that relevant link that you see here, and I just realized it's right here. So I might actually have to block that out. <laughs> Or maybe I'll just switch up the server link. But the idea is that this link is a live link that the more actions you add, just simply hit refresh here, and you'll be good to go. Enough talking though, does this work? Let's find out. I'm gonna go ahead and do the prompt. Okay, I wanna do a trip to Bali. Tell me the fun stuff I can do there and I wanna do the top five things. Top five, top five. Hit send. So first, we're gonna chat out for LLM here. We're gonna get information in and out, get everything we like. The MCP layer comes into play when we want to add that extra ability for us to access external APIs. So here we go. We're getting our outputs here of the Sacred Monkey Force Sanctuary, Temple Hopping. Then coming down here, we get pro tips of the best times to visit from April to October and so on. Now, in typical old fashioned, this would be siloed in to cursor here. But now using our MCP, we are going to have the ability to send this as a draft email. Let's do it by simply asking, okay, send this as a draft email to myself. We set up the AI action within Zapier. This should be able to do it. Obviously, if you haven't set up an AI action, and I did like send me a Slack message here, it's not gonna work. So there we go. Once it's calling the correct tool, you'll notice Gmail create draft. That could be, you know, send a Slack message, Google Doc, whatever the action we set in Zapier AI actions. We can't do crazy stuff like send a Slack message if we haven't set that in AI actions yet on that tab. But as we know, we've already set up our Gmail create draft action. Therefore, let's see if we actually receive an email. Kind of cool though, you can actually open it and see the underlying code it's identifying as well. But it's grabbing all this information, it's then communicating with this specific action here, and then in my Gmail, I should see a draft here pretty soon. Reload, and boom. If I come up here, you notice how it is a custom subject line. I didn't create this top five most do activities in Bali. And then we get like a completely structured email here of everything we'd want to do. It even added emojis, which is kind of cool. <laughs> So that's pretty cool. We have successfully connected cursor to an MCP server that then accessed an external AI within Zapier's ecosystem. Sent me a little draft email here that I can send to myself or some friends. It doesn't just stop there. So I'm gonna make sure I leave a link to Zapier apps in the description down below as well. So you can see all the different apps we can connect to in this context. Other than that though, make sure to leave a like if you felt like you learned something in today's video and I'll see you in the next video. Zapier, MCP, two random videos. That's my face. I'll see you in the next video.